Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Valsa Williams with the Midday News. The headlines. Amit Shah takes charge as Union Home Minister, Rajnath Singh as Defence Minister and Prakash Javdekar as Environment Minister. Sonia Gandhi elected leader of Congress Parliamentary Party. Five terrorists surrender in Jammu and Kashmir. Severe heat wave continues to sweep several parts of the country. And in ICC World Cup cricket, New Zealand take on Sri Lanka while Australia face Afghanistan today. Union Cabinet Minister Amit Shah today took charge as the Home Minister. Home Secretary Rajiv Gauba received Mr. Shah at the Ministry. Two Ministers of State, G. Kishan Reddy and Nityanand Rai, have also taken their charge in the Ministry. Rajnath Singh took charge as Defence Minister today. Three Service Chiefs, Army Chief General Bipin Rawat, Air Chief Marshal B.S. Dhanoa, Navy Chief Admiral Karambir Singh were present on the occasion. Earlier, Mr. Rajnath Singh visited National War Memorial in New Delhi this morning. He paid tributes to the brave soldiers who sacrificed their lives in the service of the nation. In a tweet, the minister said he is looking forward to further strengthen national security and defense. Prakash Javdekar took charge as Environment, Forest and Climate Change Minister today. Babu Supriya also took charge as Minister of State in the Ministry. Talking to media in New Delhi, Mr. Javdekar said, Preservation of environment and tackling issues related to it are among the top priorities of the government. He said, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has advocated the issues related to climate change with full determination at the Paris Summit. The minister said development has never been an obstacle in achieving preservation of the environment. He said his ministry will ensure that preservation of the environment and development are achieved simultaneously. Water, fire, air, earth and sky. This is what nature's five elements are. And the mandate of environment ministry is to protect all those five elements. In last five years, Modi government has shown that both environment protection as well as progress is possible simultaneously. And that will be our guiding principle. And in Paris Agreement, India played a role of global leader. And Narendra Modi ji facilitated the Paris Agreement. And he introduced lifestyle and climate justice as the more important issues of whole debate of climate change. Minister of State Babul Supriyo said he will be happy working under the supervision of Mr. Javdekar. Sonia Gandhi was re-elected as the leader of the Congress Parliamentary Party at a meeting of the newly elected Congress Lok Sabha MPs in New Delhi today. Her name was proposed by former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh and supported by all MPs. Congress President Rahul Gandhi thanked the voters and Congress workers. Talking to reporters, party spokesperson Randeep Surjewala said the MPs will talk out the party strategy for the upcoming session of parliament. Assam State BJP President Ranjit Kumar Das has asserted that the Citizenship Amendment Bill would not hamper the interest of the people of the state. Talking to AIR, Mr. Das hoped that the bill would be passed as soon as possible as the people of the state have given a verdict in its favour. He said that a few sections have protested against the bill, but the people of the state have supported the bill by voting in favour of the BJP. Mr. Das said that people have understood that the bill would not impact the interest of Assamese society. The government has taken four major decisions related to farmers and traders' welfare in the first meeting of its cabinet. It has approved the extension of Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi PM Kisan to all the farmers in the country. Briefing reporters in New Delhi last evening, Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar said nearly 14 crore 50 lakh farmers will now be covered under the revised scheme. 6,000 rupees per year is being given in three installments to the farmers under the scheme. The cabinet also cleared the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Pension Yojana under which small and marginal farmers will get a minimum fixed pension of 3,000 rupees per month on attaining the age of 60 years. The beneficiary should be in the age group of 18 to 40 years. Mr. Tomer said the scheme aims to initially cover 5 crore farmers in the first 3 years. The cabinet also gave its nod to a pension scheme for small traders 
information and broadcasting minister prakash javdekar said the scheme is meant to provide universal social security to all shopkeepers retail traders and self employed persons they will be given a minimum monthly pension of 3000 rupees on attaining the age of 60 years altogether 3 crore retail traders and shopkeepers will be benefited under this scheme the government also approved a special scheme for controlling foot and mouth diseases of animals mr javdekar said over 13300 crore rupees is to be allocated to eradicate the disease in 5 years in a series of tweets prime minister narendra modi termed the cabinet decisions as path breaking the bjp had promised these measures in its election manifesto mr modi said hard working farmers and industrious traders will benefit greatly due to the decisions he said the decisions will enhance dignity and empowerment of the people of the country union home minister amit shah said farmers and the poor have always been a priority for the nda government this is all india radio giving you the news For quick news updates follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. In Jammu and Kashmir five youths who had joined different terrorist groups have shunned the path of violence returned to the mainstream and surrendered confirming the development state police said the joint persistent efforts of Kulgam police and their families succeeded in weaning away these youths from the path of violence however their identity has been protected for security reasons severe heat wave continued to sweep several parts of the country delhi recorded a minimum temperature of 27.6 degrees celsius this morning the maximum temperature is expected to hover around 45 degrees celsius later in the day according to the met department The weatherman has forecast heat wave spell later in the day and in the next few days. The national capital experienced the hottest day of the season yesterday with the mercury rising to 47 degrees Celsius in some areas. The weather stations at Ayanagar and Palam recorded 46 and 46.2 degrees Celsius respectively. In Rajasthan, normal life has been disrupted due to severe heat at most of the places. Western and northern districts of the state are worst affected. Met department has issued red alert for 27 districts of the state for the next 3 days. More from our correspondent. The entire state is scorching from summer and heat wave. The summer has broken the record of 75 years at Sri Ganganagar and reaching near the record of 85 years where mercury recorded almost 50 degrees Celsius in last 24 hours. 45.6 degrees Celsius temperature recorded in Sri Ganganagar and Churu this morning at 11 a.m. Border districts of the state are also facing immense heat and mercury is recording above 46 degrees Celsius. Arrangements have been made there to protect jawans of BSF from heat. Med department has said that there is no chance to get relief from summer and heat wave in coming days. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Jaipur. Talking to AIR News, scientist in the Met Department, Mrityunjay Mohapatra said the heat wave conditions will continue for the next three days. The heat wave conditions over northwest India and then central and eastern India is continuing. Because of this dry northwesterly winds, the heat wave conditions will continue for next three days. And at some places, it may be severe heat wave conditions, especially over Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana, Chandigarh, Delhi, UP, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, and adjacent areas of Maharashtra, North Karnataka, Telangana, and some parts of Odisha and Jharkhand. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has reiterated India's firm commitment to partner Bhutan steadfastly in its quest for greater prosperity and well-being. In the bilateral meeting with Bhutan Prime Minister Dr. Lotte Tshering yesterday, Mr. Modi conveyed that India deeply values its development partnership, including cooperation in the hydropower sector with Bhutan. Mr. Lotte Tshering congratulated Prime Minister Modi for his reassumption of office. The meeting was held in a warm and friendly atmosphere reflecting the spirit of trust cooperation and understanding that characterize the close and friendly relations between the two countries. India has responded to a decision by the United States to withdraw India's GSP benefits with effect from the 5th of June 2019 in a press statement commerce ministry said these are unilateral non-reciprocal and non-discriminatory benefits extended by some developed countries to developing countries 
It said that India, as part of our bilateral trade discussions, had offered resolution on significant U.S. requests in an effort to find a mutually acceptable way forward. It is unfortunate that this did not find acceptance by the U.S. India, like the U.S. and other nations, shall always uphold its national interest in these matters. The statement said we have significant development imperatives and concerns and our people also aspire for better standards of living. This will remain the guiding factor in the government's approach. India said it will continue to build on the strong ties with the U.S., both economic and people-to-people. It expressed confidence that the two nations will continue to work together for further growing these ties in a mutually beneficial manner. In a proclamation yesterday, President Donald Trump had terminated India's designation as a beneficiary developing nation under the key GSP trade program after determining that it has not assured the U.S. that it will provide equitable and reasonable access to its markets. The unemployment rate in the country in 2017-18 was 6.1%, said to be the highest in 45 years. According to the data released by the government, 7.8% of all employable urban youth were jobless, while the percentage for the rural areas was 5.3%. Statistics Secretary Praveen Srivastava said the data was based on a new design and new matrix. He was releasing the periodic Labour Force Survey Annual Report for the period from July 2017 to June 2018 in New Delhi yesterday. In Tamil Nadu, the number of domestic and foreign tourists visiting Udagamandalam or Uti is steadily increasing according to the latest arrival figures of the State Tourism Ministry. The figures have registered a steep increase of 20,000 and reached the magical figure of 10 lakhs this year as compared to the last financial year. The boat race, the finale to the month-long summer festivities, was held in Uti today. Flower show, fruit exhibition, special services of the Nilgiris, mountain railways, etc. were the main features of the summer festival. The Tourism Ministry of Tamil Nadu said that several new initiatives are being undertaken this year for the convenience of tourists. In Maharashtra, the State Minister of Finance, Planning and Forests, Sudhir Mangantivar, inaugurated the Geographical Information System, GIS, web portal at the 16th Senior Forest Officers Conference in Nashik yesterday. This is part of the initiative of the Forest Department to go fully digital in order to boost forest conservation and monitor forestry activities. The initiative focuses on disseminating the GIS and remote sensing data on the web portal and enables all forest officials to view, edit and analyze and further to take corrective measures. Moreover, the system will help monitor plantations, illicit felling, encroachments, illegal mining and asset monitoring. The GIS portal disseminates information about various forestry activities of Maharashtra Forest Department and enables provision of layers of data consisting of plantation sites, forest nurseries, man-animal conflict, forest fire and forest trek posts, etc. In cricket, New Zealand will take on Sri Lanka while defending champions Australia face Afghanistan in the two round-robin matches of ICC World Cup in the United Kingdom today. The New Zealand-Sri Lanka game will be played at Cardiff at 3 p.m. Indian Standard Time. The Australia-Afghanistan fixture is slated to begin at 6 p.m. at Bristol. In tennis, world number two Karolina Pliskova has made a shocked third-round exit at the French Open, the second Grand Slam of the season in Paris. The Trek, who was the semi-finalist in 2017, lost to world number 31 Petra Martic of Croatia, 3-6-3-6. Defending champion Rafael Nadal and third seed Roger Federer were among those who advanced to the pre-quarter finals. In men's doubles, Rohan Bokpana and his Romanian teammate Marius Kopil progressed to the round of 16. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Amit Shah takes charge as Union Home Minister, Rajnath Singh as Defence Minister and Prakash Javdekar as Environment Minister. Sadia Gandhi elected leader of Congress Parliamentary Party. Five terrorists surrender in Jammu and Kashmir. Severe heat wave continues to sweep several parts of the country. And in ICC World Cup cricket, New Zealand take on Sri Lanka while Australia face Afghanistan today. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.nic.in. And with that, we end the midday news.